Yeah, Lord Simmons, I'm from Wellington and I'm 50 years old. It's all about being happy, really. Um, you know, if you can be happy in what you do, and you know, that's part of the reason for chucking my job and leaving my wife. It was yeah, a bit of a life crisis, I guess. Too much stress for too long. So, yeah, you got to deal with it, dress it, fix it. Yeah, campgrounds, everybody's friendly. You can't walk from one end of the camp to the other without somebody offering you a wine or a beer or something. And you know, a lot of friends um, are made here, so a lot of people get cleaned up quite close. The camp came up for sale. A mate of mine rang me. That was all happening while we were up here. And so I just came in, had a wander around, and thought this, this could be kind of cool. <laughs> I think you know we officially took over running the camp three years ago, even though we've owned it for nine years, we decided to do it ourselves. It's a funny little business, you know, we started, it was losing money, it's growth now, it's phenomenal. Set to put in a resort pool that's going to be 25 metres long, big spa, and there's a pavilion going in with a, a gymnasium, games area. But there's also a barbecue brewery, which we'll probably build in the next year or two, and that's going to have a commercial kitchen. Um, and that'll overlook the tennis court and the swimming pool and pizza oven and all that, all the resorty type stuff. It's a good question. <laughs> um, I was always quite keen to be a computer engineer of some description, but uh, I was told by the, um, you know, the uh, career advisor at the college that I wasn't smart enough, and uh, you know, and I ended up in sales and ultimately ended up owning the company, which was kind of cool. I wasn't smart enough to be an engineer, but I was okay to own the business, so. I think we started back in 1st of June 1991, we set up a company called Silicon Systems and I founded the company uh, and then we subsequently it just grew so we turned into a uh, manufacturer. Uh, initially we were just manufacturing PCs, subsequently servers and then we ended up being the largest supplier to the government from a New Zealand based entity. But yeah, I think it was just being in the right place at the right time. We made a lot of money, um, and that's what's helped to fund the camp. The uh, computer industry took a big downturn, or at least it did for us, um, when the national government brought out the older government. Um, they go and sign up a deal with uh, Hewlett Packard, pretty much direct. That put a, uh, a stop to us supplying a lot of service into government. Um, and I think they chewed up about 25% of our business 35% of our revenue, that was substantial. And what we had to do was, uh, we pretty much had to reinvent ourselves. Anybody that buys anything in the New Zealand government to go on the secure network has to come from us. And uh, the ironic thing that happened while the government at you know, one point take a whole lot of business off us, they then turn around and with the whole Al Qaeda and the Americans and they all jump up and down, they um, invested heavily in security. So that, for us, meant um, pretty much filled the hole. Um, what we lost out in government, we ended up doing more specialised work. I don't know what they do, I'm not allowed to know, but James Bond type stuff, they do it. I actually got pretty sick about, not last November, November the year before, um, and I just couldn't work, couldn't do anything, no motivation, so it was, it was pretty bad. The body, the brain, there's too much stress for too long, it just says that's it, no more, you're not doing it anymore. And I think that's where the anxiety comes from. 
and ultimately end up with depression. But uh, like what the psychiatrist said, <laughs> it's just your brain's had enough. 24 years, too much stress, and you know, it's a responsibility of the staff. Too many people, and everybody comes back to you, you're going to solve it, you know, the whole world's problems for them. Yeah, I just don't do that anymore now. Just worked out, I couldn't do it anymore. But the, uh, the depression's not that bad. You know, if I had to have it again, I'd rather have the depression, it's the anxiety, that's the bad bit. Well, anxiety's like a, I don't know, it's like a knot in your stomach. You know, I have it now. Yeah, what was it like? You'd wake up, I couldn't sleep, so I'd wake up 1.30 in the morning. And I wouldn't fall asleep again until 8 o'clock in the morning, so I'd get up and do some work on the computer or play Sudoku or do something. Um, but you wake up, your heart pounds. It's, um, your heart's racing. You know, 1.30 in the morning, you wake up, your heart's racing. What the fuck is going on? That was bad. And that would carry on pretty much day and night. And uh, you couldn't deal with anything negative. Um, just didn't wreck you, wreck you for two weeks. You know, one, one little incident. It was just, yeah, just upset you. You actually got seriously depressed about it. Um, yeah. I think it's because you, know, you just end up with too much to do. You don't have enough time to do it. You're like dealing with 30,000 invoices a month from 97 suppliers. Just silly stuff, paperwork, accounting, this, that, you know. Horrendous, you know, might be some horrible reconciliation on a, you know, 30 page statement on some silly account with some weird stuff, you know. It's, I don't know, I think the brain will put up with so much, you know, I think just, according to what the psychiatrist said, he just said years and years of too much stress, you just wake up one morning, that's it, just stop. You're sad, you're unmotivated, you can't get out of bed, you can't do anything, that's how it is. And um, that's it, you know, you just got to stop, recover, it's slow, slow process. Um, the medication, uh, it helps, it's not a solution. You gotta make changes yourself. You know, you gotta get away from all the things that upset you, all the things that uh, stress you. You don't want the stress, you know, and you can't deal with it anymore. And I can deal with things now a lot better than what I, a year ago I couldn't do anything. But I feel like I took out like three months, so I just sat at my mate's house and I just slept. Wake up at 1.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, get up. I don't even know what I did. Play some Doku, get on the computer, do a bit of work. I used to get emails. I get 200 emails a day. I still, I probably get about 50 to 100 emails a day now, so it's not too bad. Um, but just to reply to one was a struggle. Just to have a shower, couldn't be bothered. You know, you had to go and get out of your dressing gown. You got to clean your teeth, and you know, I got to find some clothes to wear. That's when oh, I won't bother. So some days I just didn't even have a shower. I just stay in my dressing gown all day and. I was living at a mate's house just after I left my wife. And, you know, I'd struggle just to do the dishes by four o'clock before he got home from the night before. And, uh, but yeah, sort of three months of that, and I slowly recovered. You'd go up and down, but um, you get to a stage where you can deal with things again. And, uh, you know, I'd spent quite a bit of time up here. I didn't do much, I'd just come up and muck around. But even now, you know, I've got a whole list of jobs to do here. Am I going to do it? Maybe. And if I don't, I don't care. Just don't care anymore. You know, hopefully um, I'll come with my medication soon, or start to. It's about a 16 month period to weed me off it. So, uh, but different sort of things motivate you now. Yeah, so your whole priorities go from making money, um, the more you make, the more you want. You know, at the end of the day, that's bullshit. It's not about money, it's about being happy. And you can't buy it. Which is why I'm now doing what I want to do. It's my passion, this is what I enjoy. 
and it makes me happy. I enjoy it. The year, not last year, but the year before I got sick, I don't think I travelled at all that year, so I didn't actually have any ho real holidays. And um, I think that just overloaded me. It just took on too much. As you hit it. <laughs> but now it's all manageable, you know, and uh, yeah, you don't want to go there. <laughs> I'm actually happy doing nothing. <laughs> I could spend every day and have nothing to do, play Sudoku, muck around. Time just goes, and I enjoy it. It's ironic because we've uh, you know, been all over Europe extensively through Asia with the kids and uh, whether you're staying in the nicest resorts or hotels or yes, yeah, so the kids, the best holidays I've ever had, it's the campground. None of the other places even get a mention. <laughs>